You ready? Uh, welcome to 30, day 35 of press availability. Uh, we have, I think, nine days left. If you're counting really close, eight and a half days. So we're coming toward the end of the session. And uh, we've, we've had a lot of good discussion. We had great discussion on the, uh, the floor today. And, and I think in the coming days, we'll probably have additional. So with that, let's open it up for questions. Um, you passed SB 197 today on consent. Um, that's the bill that makes the BYU Police Department subject to the open records law yes. stemming from a past um, dispute. Uh, I, I, I know it's on consent, but I'm just wondering, um, President, if, if you have feelings about the, the need for that. It, it did pass unanimously. Yeah, and I, uh, that bill was probably a bill that probably should have been uh, uh, gone through the normal process. I don't know. I suppose it could have been a consent bill. That's probably up for debate a little bit. But uh, my understanding is there's fairly uh, good support and there was it was fairly consensus to, that this needs to happen. And so uh, I actually support it, so obviously. And in, in, in why do you support Why Why do you think that's important that, that uh, BYU Police Department is subject to the same grandma rules as other certified police agencies? Well, I think anytime you have a public uh, force that, you know, that if it were a private, absolutely private force, that would be different. But I think they have some of the same attributes and same uh, 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 qualifications and, and uh, as, as public forces, so I think if you're going to if you're going to be a public force and want that that uh, as well as that connectivity, you probably ought to have the uh, the regulations that go with it, like a public force. So I think they're acting, and for all intents and purposes, are pretty much a public force. So good to have Senator Vickers here. Come on, come on over. I'm just going to open this door. It was locked. Okay. Other bills you had questions on? Um, not bills, but um, a budget question since the budget chairman just walked in. Are you getting any closer to identifying an amount for a, a further tax cut uh, beyond what's already in the tax reform bill over in the House? You know, there's taxers and there's spenders here. Right now, I'm focused on spending. Uh, we're just trying to get a, a budget balanced on what we have. To, we know we're working with right now. I know it's difficult. We've got a, we've got a proposed. Uh, there will be proposed tax cuts that will come up, but I, there's nothing firm. We haven't we haven't met with uh, leadership in the house yet. Uh, this is what's going on is just between the the, uh, the my counterpart in the house, or our kind of Senator Epson's counterpart and mine in the house, and really it. Right now, there's we, we don't have a lot more information than we had last week. We'll do shortly, though. And when is when it shortly? Um, Maybe late well, this afternoon. We'll have some things that, well, I mean, we're getting closer. Every time we have a meeting, we get a little closer. But there's, there's so uh, you want to make the decisions on funding the bills that are out there before you see what's what's left for the tax I, mean, I was just talking out in the hall and part of the issue we're dealing with is is a lot of people are requesting money this year because there was a, a perception that there was so much ask for for considerably more than they they have other years or they ask for maybe more than needed and, and so it's there's a there's a lot more uh, walking through the weeds and we've had to do the last couple of years. Um, on SB 54, we learned this morning the Supreme Court isn't going to be taking that case, but there has been some question about whether there will be a legislative effort to deal with that um, this year. Do you foresee that? Do you expect anything to happen on that? You know, you'd never say no, but we have passed the deadline for uh, the opening of bill files without uh, without some type of uh, floor approval. So uh, I guess I wouldn't say no, but I, right now it looks unlikely. It happened this morning, and maybe it hasn't percolated with, uh, with legislators yet, but I've not heard of anyone who would like permission to open a bill file. 
Do you see a need to address that issue again as, as a legislature now that the Supreme Court's not taking the case? Uh, or should the bill just, just stand at this point? Yeah, I, I think we'll be dealing with election processes like Medicaid or cannabis or any other bills that we deal with probably as long as we're here. Uh, whether we deal with that issue specifically, I'm not sure, but we're already talking about there's bills out there for congressional elections. We, we experience that. And there's, there's presidential primaries that are being talked about. And, and I think the election process, whether this particular signature process is part of it, I think will continue the debate. Uh, if you look at how we how we elect uh, uh, officials and officials in midterm, I think there's still a question as to how it applies and and what there should be done there. So I think specifically on SB 54, this will probably put it to bed uh, in some way, shape, or form with the, at least the legal battle. But I can't imagine we won't talk about the election process every year. But, but specifically rather than the, the general election process, because I understand what you're saying, there are a lot of election related bills and probably always will be. Yeah. But with, with the idea of, of going in and, and trying to repeal or significantly change the signature gathering process, do you personally see a need for that at this point now that the court's not going to take this case up? Uh, I, no, I wouldn't do it personally. But I would say that, you know, I, I think I'm pretty much on record. I've, I've been elected uh, twice in uh, midterm events. Uh, first time, my house, the, 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 the individual that I was uh, running for his seat in the house resigned, and, and I came in uh, midterm, but I went through a, a convention process. And then when Senator Bell resigned last time to take the uh, uh, lieutenant governor's position, then became Lieutenant Governor Bell, uh, I, there was a special election process and I went through the dele delegate process and convention. Uh, that was a very good process. There were 268 delegates and uh, I met most all those 268 delegates on their doorsteps or in their kitchens or in their living rooms and I felt it was, uh, I felt it was one of the uh, better uh, election processes I've ever been through. When you're talking to people one-on-one -on -one and they're interviewing you and, and they, they have a chance to find out what your positions are and who you are and what you are, wow. Uh, and I actually found out a whole lot of what's going on in Senate District 22 and how they felt, and some of the concerns they had. Uh, it was, it was a, that, that process is hard to beat when, you know, rather than sound bites or flyers or mailers or or media uh, takes. Now, when you get to a statewide level, I think it gets harder. So I think, uh, I don't see that we're going to go backwards, but I do believe there's a good process. And there are other people that feel differently, so. But I I think we're pretty much where we are. So, Senator Vickers, I yeah, don't know what you Yeah, let me add that. So, you know, there is, you know, the SB 54 has been a contentious item within the party, within the Republican Party. I don't think it's been quite as, as involved with the de Democratic Party, so I don't <coughs> speak to that, but there, there's not an appetite in the majority party in the Senate to do any kind of a repeal. I, would, I think the message that we have is that we would hope that the, the court decision now ending that battle would instill in those that have been pushing for that court decision to have a desire to repair uh, relationships with the legislature and the governor and move on and improve. So specifically, the Republican Party, Senator Reby here would have to speak for the Democratic Party, but that is, that's where I feel we're at with it right now on that. So even if someone were able to revive a repeal effort, you don't think it would clear the Senate this session? No, I don't. No. Senator Reby, comment on the minority party, and he, on SB 54 and, and the Supreme Court's denial of cert, meaning that they don't want to hear the case. Uh, I, I like the process that was in place. I'm somebody who ran, I maintain signatures, but I also want to do the convention, and I think the more ways to get more people on the ballot makes for a more robust system. Okay. We have Senator... 
damaging to the Democratic Party as it has the Republican Party, though, right? The fight over SB 54. I would say that it's not been as damaging to the Democratic Party as much as the Republican Party. Uh, you know, before we leave that, uh, I do believe that uh, it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot better system to try to join together and to try to maintain uh, respect and and uh, and I think it's really important, as Senator Vicker said, that you try to unify, and hopefully uh, this will give a chance for the the both parties, but especially the Republican Party, which I'm a member of, uh, to be able to unify and, and maintain the focus that they ought to. So get back, on, get back on the issues at hand. Do you think the state Republican Party should be on the hook for paying, re repaying the state for its legal fees and defending the law? Well, I'm not going to go there, but I would say so. I mean, <laughs> why, why shouldn't they? But anyway, okay. Uh, Senator, we have Senator Fillmore here. Any, he had a great bill on the floor. Anybody have questions on the scholarship bill? Good debate. Crickets. We can call it a voucher bill now that it passed. Is that? It? <laughs> uh, I, I just uh, maybe weigh in, and I didn't want to weigh in from the dais, but. Uh, uh, I had an experience. I, I used to be on higher, excuse me, on public ed appropriations until some Senate president took me off this year. And I've had a lot of conversations with him about that, but he seems not to have wavered. And so uh, I, I, I uh, when I was there last year, though, it was very interesting. We had, a, we had funding for Carson Smith's come in, and at the time there was a, there was a, uh, a backlog, there was a waiting list. And we had uh, parents that uh, had called and said they would like to have their kids involved in Carson Smith. And, and the basic premise behind Carson Smith was that we give them uh, an enhanced uh, scholarship because the, the Carson Smith students uh, get that IEP, I suppose, if you get those technical terms. They get more money because they have a disability. And that's basically what it is. But. We talked about the amount of money they would have, we would have spent on them if they were in the system, and most of those children have special classroom space, and many of them do, and special teachers. And so we bring them into the system, and, and I can't remember even what the dollars were, but the dollars were talked about, and I'm going to use a, probably a non-accurate dollar, but it may have been in the system, if they stayed in the system, we may have uh, spent $800 on them for a student. Okay. Eight thousand, I mean, yeah. eight thousand dollars, eight hundred be a good deal, but eight thousand dollars, <laughs> and uh, uh, but we gave them a voucher. The voucher may have been something like six thousand dollars, and uh, the parents came in, one after one, with tears in their eyes, and uh, Carson Smith's mom was there, and she talked about the the benefit that it was for their family. And uh, there, are, there, are, there are great schools out there, and I'll talk about one, Pingree's a great school, but their tuition's not $6,000. And so you had, you had students that, that really wanted to go to Pingree that could take this $6,000 and add to it an additional amount of money. And uh, with tears in their eyes, these parents thanked us for that little bit of money to pay for their, their tuition. And I had... Uh, couple of House members in the minority party lean over to me that had been opposed and probably helped lead the way to the, uh, in 2006, to the repeal of our voucher bill, turn and say, why don't we fully fund this? The state is saving money, the parents are much happier, and the kids are getting what could be a better education. And at least the parents thought it was a much better education. And that's a question that I think got asked on the floor today, but I think it's something we'll probably grapple with in the future. But if, in fact, these special needs kids can get more specific help for their particular disability, and it's really, I'm not sure that our public school system was designed to, to actually give that individual help to each one of these kids with special needs, 
but there are surely many schools in our community that are. And whether it's a charter school or, or other type of school, I just believe that the, that type of individual help, when you see the tears in the parents' eyes, it was moving to everyone there. And that's something we didn't get on the floor today. And, and I surely respect the, and I'm sure Senator Reby will talk about it, uh, the, the position of trying to make sure that we don't undermine the, the, uh, the capacity of our current school system where we, we always have budget problems and we always need more money and the funding for schools is always an issue but the net effect was I think the public school systems ended up with more money and, uh, and I think there's a way to get together. I think we probably just have to more, more discussion on it but I think it was a healthy debate and I think uh, hopefully as we have these opportunities in the future that we're able to, to through that respectful process, uh, hope maybe even get on the same page in the future. But Senator Reby, I don't know if you have comments. I liked Carson Smith. I think Carson Smith is a great program. I think there's lots of guardrails in place. When we talk about a parent's right to choose, um, I respect that tremendously. But some of our students that have disabilities don't always have parents that advocate for them. And sometimes our parents, because this is the only child they have that has special needs, they don't really understand some of the funding and how it all works. Um, so I have seen students go from school to school as a teacher looking for something better, only to come back to the public school, and sometimes being um, confused by the whole system. So for our child's rights, I think that it's important to have guardrails in place so that they are getting the services they need. Uh, there was a school a couple of years ago that was not providing services but was collecting the funding and that is really concerning to me. As a teacher and somebody who's worked with the school, uh, Utah State Office of Education as a finance person, I, I want to know where the money's going, I want to know how it's being spent. I, I don't think 1.2 million dollars and a 12 million dollar um, tax credit bill is sufficient I mean, I don't think that's a good way of spending our funds to help our students. I think there's other ways we can spend $1.2 million instead of administering a new program that's going to take the place of another program that has more guardrails. I think it's important that we have IEPs, and I think the students need to be monitored very carefully because it is a very, very sensitive issue to these parents. And uh, I think we could maybe just fund Carson Smith at a higher rate. And we obviously want, uh, all of us want the best education for the children. Uh, Senator Fillmore, and I'll let you have a comment that I think we've had probably a good discussion here unless there's further questions. Go ahead. No, I said this on the floor, I, but I mean, overall I think it's important that we who are funding public education need to keep in mind that we're on the parents' team and it's not the other way around. And we need to make sure that we are doing everything that we can to support parents as they work to direct the education of their children in the way that they deem best. To that point, um, there was a number given on the floor that 12% of Utah students are under some special needs or IEP uh, area of, of concern. Does that suggest that this is going to be an ongoing thing that will need to be addressed in the future? Uh, I think education funding and providing those tools is always an ongoing thing. But just to I, my statement on the floor was that 12% of the students with disabilities don't have IEPs. And my source for that is our fiscal analyst office because that's the number that they were using in determining the fiscal note to determine how many of these students might do this from public versus private school. Thanks for and, the and, and, and I would say if Carson Smith were a failure, we probably wouldn't be doing this. And I think you'll see if, if this, this bill may or may not pass, but if the bill passes, I think in a year or two we'll know whether this is a success or a failure. And, and if, if the schools are, are not providing the services, I think there will be uh, both parental accountability and community accountability and, and, and feedback, and we'll know whether it's successful or not or whether it's a good thing or not. So with that, why don't we move on? Go ahead. I, I was just going to ask quickly with Senator Fillmore here, um, when do you expect to see... You're not going to ask me about tax reform. Yes, I am. <laughs> when, when do you expect to see the House bill come over? Actually, um, I... Um, we had a series of meetings this morning about lots of topics, but not that one. So I don't have a better answer for you. That's a question. You'll, I mean, unless the president. Knows. No, I don't either. Um, I think that's a question. I that you'll saw need to Speaker Wilson this morning. He didn't, he didn't talk about the schedule. 
So. Um, but your committee will, will hear that bill, right? To have read That'll be up to the rules committee, but I assume so. I'm, I would say I'm that guessing. I would say you're probably we need high something probability. to do. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, and you have a couple meetings scheduled this week, so you you can accommodate if it takes a few yes. days to get through. Yeah. So we're not going to hear it tomorrow, but it's possible that we could hear it on Wednesday or Friday. And that's still enough time to get it through. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Again, appreciate you being here. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, sir.